What's up everybody? So I'm back and I'm continuing to go over newspaper articles that were being printed at the time Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey were arrested and convicted for the murder of Teresa Halbach. We're going all the way back to the beginning and right up until today. There's a ton of interesting things that were being printed back then. Now the most interesting thing that I've learned so far from the few videos I've done going over these articles is that the media and the press were already printing the frame-up theory that the police and people in the area were allegedly framing Stephen Avery. They weren't saying who did it, they didn't know at this point in time, but they were just floating the theory out there that it could be possible because of the $36 million lawsuit. Now I knew that it was being presented in court at a later date when this, this, see this is way before it ever went to trial. So I knew it ended up being presented in court by Stephen Avery's original attorneys, Jerome Buting and Dean Strang, but I didn't realize that the press was covering it almost since the beginning. I found that very interesting. So the first article we're gonna go over here today is from November 20th, 2005, and it is from the Janesville Gazette. And as always, I will put them up on the screen for you. Um, it, this says, Stephen Avery, a man who spent 18 years in prison certainly knows from your hardcore criminals how to dispose of a body properly. I don't believe Avery would be stupid enough to kill a woman on his property. See, they're already talking about it. Like in this theory, they're talking about how Stephen Avery spent 18 years in prison. So he was in there probably with some not so good people. Even though he was wrongfully convicted, not everybody in the prison obviously is wrongfully convicted, and he could have learned how to properly dispose of a body, and this person is talking about how Stephen Avery wouldn't be stupid enough to do it on his own property. He would do it somewhere else. I'm starting to believe the police are framing him because of his civil rights suit against Manitowoc County. Next one we're going over is from the Janesville Gazette, November 22nd, 2005. It states, Teresa Halbach's murder takes auto trader by surprise. The company lists case as first run in with trouble. The president of a nationwide company that employed a Wisconsin photographer, of course, they're talking about Teresa Halbach, when she was killed on a photo shoot, says it was the first trouble of its kind the firm employees had ever had. Teresa Halbach, 25, disappeared on Halloween while photographing vehicles for Auto Trader magazine. Last of her three appointments that day was at a Michotte area salvage lot owned by the family of Stephen Avery, taking pictures for a minivan they had for sale. After a search found human remains in a burn pit at the property, Avery was charged with first degree murder. When he was originally going to get charged with this, they hadn't even identified the body yet. That was from yesterday's video or a couple of days ago. The article was talking about how Stephen Avery was going to be charged, but they had yet to identify the body. It is just such a tragedy. I don't have another word for it, said George Brooks, president of Trader Publications, which owns Auto Trader Magazine. He said in a telephone interview Monday evening that the company has 700 titles all over the country and it's never had any problems with employees and customers. He said he was sickened to hear what happened to Teresa Halbach. Avery 43 appeared Monday in a Manitowoc Circuit Court. This next article is from November 24th, 2005 from the Wisconsin State Journal. Stephen Avery used in push for death penalty. They were trying to get the death penalty for Stephen Avery. Lawmakers point to Avery murder charge and calling for the death penalty in Wisconsin. At this point in time, Wisconsin did not have the death penalty, and they were using Stephen Avery as a reason to bring it back. Weeks ago, state lawmakers called Stephen Avery the poster boy for law changes designed to help ensure no man would spend time in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Now with Avery back behind bars and after being charged with the grisly murder of a 25-year-old photographer, some lawmakers are citing him in their push to resurrect the death penalty. How about this theory? They were hoping to get the death penalty for Stephen Avery so that he would be convicted and killed by the state so that none of the things that the state allegedly did to frame Stephen Avery would ever come to light. It would be swept under the rug. The $36 million would have been forgotten about and nobody would be talking about it today. 
How about that for them trying to get Stephen Avery the death penalty? It is sad that this murder occurs, but it, it, it brings the whole issue of the death penalty back in the news. Wisconsin's 1853 ban on the practice is the longest standing one in any of the 12 states without it. Attempts to reinstate the punishment, which resulted in four hangings in the 1840s and the 1850s, have repeatedly failed over the past 152 years. The lawmaker said he is so incensed by the murder and mutilation of Teresa Haldock in his eastern Wisconsin district that he will amend the resolution to apply to single murders. It is pretty gruesome. Yeah, you cannot convince me otherwise that, that that's exactly what they were trying to do. They were trying to get rid of Stephen Avery. It didn't work. It's pretty gruesome what happened to her. State Senator Tom Reynolds, meanwhile, introduced a bill last week to reinstate the death penalty in cases in which a person is charged with murder, sexual assault, and mutilation of a corpse. Avery would not qualify since prosecutors have not charged him with sexual assault. Reynolds says it was a coincidence his bill was introduced as the Avery case dominated the headlines. Coincidence, though he felt that may help his cause. The Wisconsin Innocent Project stated, but Avery illustrates the dangers that authorities could put innocent people to death. It is, in the end, a human system, and it cannot be made infallible. Avery, 43, was charged with first-degree murder and mutilation of a corpse this month after investigators said they found Teresa Hallbach's remains. Hallbach disappeared on October 31st. The next day, lawmakers gave final approval to a series of criminal justice reforms once called the Stephen Avery Bill designed to prevent wrongful convictions. So that's where I'm going to end this one. They were actually using Stephen Avery as a reason to bring back the death penalty. And you're not going to be able to convince me otherwise they were doing that so that they could make Stephen Avery disappear. That the case would be gone. There would be no risk of everybody that was involved in allegedly framing Stephen Avery getting caught. If Stephen Avery was just executed by the state. But we know that didn't happen and he continues to fight for his freedom to this day. Kathleen Zellner last week uh, presented her newest filing on behalf of Stephen Avery in an attempt to get him an evidentiary hearing. So it's going to be very interesting to see what comes of that. Let me know what you think of these articles. Let me know what you think of the case in general. I hope you're all having a good day, and I'll see you again soon.